Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're gonna do lesson 322, day two, uh, more simplifying rational expressions. All right, so we're gonna, again, learn how to simplify rational expressions and talk a little bit more about uh, what a whole is. All right, so we're gonna start off with some factoring since it's just one of those essential skills in simplifying rational expressions. All right, if you remember from yesterday's lesson, the first thing that we need to do with any rational expression is factor it. All right, so uh, let's say we get a rational expression and this is either in the numerator or the denominator. We would want to uh, turn this into an expression that looks like this where we have the two parentheses because we could possibly get one of those factors to cancel out. All right, so we're gonna factor this one. So this is just a straight up factoring problem. I'm gonna, I got my box ready, so I'm gonna draw my diamond a little bit better than that, hopefully. Yeah, that's better. And then I'm gonna start the factoring process, right? So the first term here, the three X squared, goes in the upper left-hand box. The plus one is gonna go down here in the bottom right-hand box. And then the middle term, this negative four X, goes in the bottom of the diamond. To figure out what goes in the top of our diamond, we multiply this filled-in diagonal that we already have. So three X squared times one is gonna be three X squared. And then we gotta find two numbers that multiply to be three and add to be negative four. So those two numbers are gonna be negative three and negative one, right? And I need to make sure that I put X's on those so that way I get my X times X for the X squared. Uh, but negative three times negative one is a positive three and negative three plus negative one is a negative four, right? So those two numbers will work. Now that's, the part right here is figuring out those two numbers. That is a part that students really tend to struggle with, and I understand that. Uh, but just trial and error. Make sure whatever two numbers you put in there, you test it out real quick. Multiply, make sure you get the top, add them, make sure you get the bottom. And if you don't find the, the correct set of numbers right away, just keep trying, right? Don't give up. It's a, it, it's a trial and error kind of thing, and the more you do it, the better you get at it. All right, so here we go. So now I'm gonna start working on these outside numbers, right? Remember these are rectangles, so we need the height and the width to multiply to give us what's inside of the box here. Uh, so to get a three X squared, I know I'm gonna need an X and an X, right? It says X times X gives me an X squared, but I need a three and a one to get a three, right? So the three's gotta go somewhere, either over here or over here. And the way that I figure out where it's gonna go is I look at the numbers in the row and then in the column, and I notice that both of these have a three in it. So the three would go here on the left, right? Because three goes nicely into both numbers in this row. If I had put it up here, it would go into the first number, but it would not go into the negative one nicely. So it would not be smart to put it up here, right? So then we go x times something gives us negative one x. Well, that's gotta be a negative one. And then three times something gives me negative three. That's gotta be a negative one. All right, so now I have my two factors. We've got x minus one and three x minus one. There's my factored form. All right, so that's all there is to factoring. Like I said, it should be something that you get quicker and better at with practice. So factoring should not be a big deal here soon because we're gonna be doing it a lot. And uh, the more you get used to it, the faster you get at it, the more accurate you get with it. So don't give up on it. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about what, what factoring allows us to do, right? It allows us to take a number and split it into two other numbers that multiply to get the original number. Now, it sounds like a mouthful, but uh, here's a simple example, right? So, uh, for instance, like if we were just dealing with numbers, I could take 14 and rewrite it as 7 times 2. I just factored 14, right? I factored it into 7 and 2. Those two numbers multiply to get the original number, right? So 7 times 2 is equivalent to 14. I could do the same thing with the eight, right? So I could rewrite eight as four times two, right? Four times two is eight, so these two are equivalent. It's just in a factored form. But the advantage of being in that factored form is that now I can see common factors in the top and the bottom. Since these are being multiplied, I can cancel out those common factors. Notice that there's a common factor of two. So the twos would cancel and I can rewrite this fraction as seven over four. So seven over four is equivalent to 14 over eight. In fact, you've probably recognized this as a reduced fraction of the 14 over eight. This is the process of reducing a fraction. It's what we're doing with things like this, right? So in this form, we don't see any common factors, right? But we just factored three X squared minus four X plus one 
in the previous problem. So we know that we can rewrite this as 3x plus 1, or I'm sorry, 3x minus 1, and x minus 1, all over x minus 1. All right, so I took this and factored it so that it's two numbers being multiplied by each other that equal the original thing, right? So these two things, if I were to multiply them out, I would get this, so I know these are equivalent, just like I did over here. And now that I'm in factored form, I see a common factor. I have an x minus one in the top, an x minus one in the bottom, and those are gonna cancel and give me three x minus one, okay? Now, I can't just say three x minus one because there's one little caveat, and that's the fact that this x minus one produced an excluded value, so I can say this, and this are equivalent as long as x is not allowed to equal one. All right, so three x minus one is equivalent to this original rational expression as long as I don't allow x to equal positive one because if I put a one in there, we'd get one minus one, which is zero, and that would force a division by zero, which is bad. Okay, we can't do that. All right, so I just wanted you to see the similarities to what you were doing in junior high, which is numbers. Right? and realizing that what we're doing in Algebra 2 is almost the same exact thing with expressions. Okay, It's really not that big of a jump. Once you see what it is we're doing, it's not that hard. All right, so let's try a few more. Let's practice a couple more. All right, remember I put your checklist here for you to go through. We're gonna factor first, we're gonna cancel common factors, and then we need to make sure that we state excluded values. All right, so here in this first one, they were really nice to us. It's already in its factored form. We can see the parentheses. Uh, so all we have to do is part two here, which is where we cancel the common factors. So I see a C plus three and a C plus three. So those cancel out. And remember when we cancel things out in a fraction, they become a one, right? That's why we draw the line like that because it actually represents a giant one. All right, so all that's left is C minus four and c plus 10. And now we can say this and this are equivalent as long as c doesn't equal something, right? And in fact, there's gotta be two values that we can't allow c to be, <laughs> where it's c to be, right? So we can't allow c to be negative 10 because if I put a negative 10 into this factor here, right? Negative 10 plus 10 would give me a zero, so that would be bad, so I'm gonna exclude negative 10 and then here, negative three would be bad, right? Because negative three plus three would give me a zero. So I can't allow C to be negative 10 or negative three. All right, so this and this are equivalent as long as C doesn't equal these two numbers. All right, let's try it again. This one looks a little tricky, but it's in factored form, which is nice. So we don't have to worry about factoring in this one. Um, and notice that the a minus eight here in the top has an exponent on it with the two. So I'm gonna rewrite that in what we call uh, an expanded form. All right, so I'm gonna say negative eight, and then parentheses a minus eight, and then parentheses a minus eight again, because that's what the squared means, right? It's a minus eight times itself. So here's a minus eight times itself and then I'm gonna write the bottom of the fraction. So we've got a minus eight and a plus three. All right, so now there's no exponents or anything getting in the way. I can take a look at the top and the bottom. My factors in the top are negative eight, a minus eight, and a minus eight. Those are the three things that are being multiplied. In the bottom, I have a minus eight and a plus three. So a minus eight and a minus eight, those are common factors. I can cancel those out, they become a big giant one. And what I'm left with is a negative eight, an a minus eight, and in the bottom, all we have left is an a plus three, okay? So this simplified to this, and I can say these two things are equivalent as long as a doesn't equal a couple of different values here. So again, I'm going back down here. And I'm thinking one bad value would be a positive eight because if I did eight minus eight, I would get zero. So I need to exclude eight. And then here, negative three would cause a zero. Okay, so there's my excluded values. There's my simplified rational expression. Now let's do one more. 
All right, so this one's not so nice. It is not in factored form. Everything's being added and subtracted, which is bad news for trying to cancel things out. So we are going to have to factor both the top and the bottom of this expression. Okay, so remember what our goal is here. We're, gonna, we're trying to rewrite this thing in factored form. So we want two parentheses, right? Because this is a quadratic. And then same thing in the bottom. I'm gonna get two parentheses, just like this. All right, so I'm gonna try and rewrite this thing to look like this. And hopefully we have some uh, parentheses that are the same that we can cancel out. All right, so I'm gonna start with a box and diamond. I'm gonna do the top first. All right, and this is why that factoring skill is so important because if you couldn't factor right now, you didn't know how to factor it, you couldn't even start this problem. Okay, so I'm gonna put x squared, oops, let me get my diamond, there we go. So I'm gonna take x squared, it goes in the upper left hand box, the five goes in the bottom right hand box, the six x goes in the bottom of our diamond, then we multiply to get the top, right? So we're gonna take five times x squared, which is just five x squared. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me five, and add to give me a six. And those numbers are five and one. Five times one is five, five plus one is six. All right, so I'm gonna put that in my other diagonal. And then I find my outside dimensions. All right, so we've got x and x, right? x times x is x squared. x times five is five x. x times one is one x. So the top of my fraction here is gonna be x plus five and x plus one, okay? Now I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom of the fraction, so I gotta do one more factoring. Okay, so x squared goes in the upper left-hand corner, negative 30 goes in the bottom right-hand corner, negative 1x goes in the bottom of my diamond, multiply to get negative 30x squared. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 30, add to give me negative one. And like I said, you might have to think about it for a little bit. There's a lot of different ways to multiply to 30, so you might have to try a few different combinations before you find it. But this is the combination that should work. So negative six times five is negative 30, negative six plus five is negative one. So I'll put that into my other diagonal and then I'm gonna work on my outsides. All right, so x and x, pretty typical. x times five gives me five x, x times negative six gives me negative six x, and there's my, there's my two factors. So I've got x plus five and x minus six. Now we're in factored form. Do we see any common factors? You should be nodding your head yes, Mr. Weldon. I see a couple common factors here. We have an x plus five and an x plus five in the top and the bottom here. So the x plus fives, they'll cancel out. And what we're left with is x plus one over x minus six. Don't forget your excluded values, right? You did a lot of work, you canceled things out. Students always forget about the excluded values you have to state them, right? Because we can't say this and this are equal unless we exclude those values, okay? So I'm gonna come back here to where I originally factored before I canceled anything out. And I look at the x plus five and I, I say, okay, well, a negative five would be bad here because that would, that would create a zero. So negative five gets excluded. Then I come over to the other factor, right? Six minus six would make a zero. So we don't want x to be six. And there we go. So this and this are equivalent as long as we exclude these values. All right, guys, uh, that's enough for today. Uh, make sure you give the practice problems a try. You should be well prepared for the quiz tomorrow. Good luck.